Are you taking things too personally? In this video, I'm going to share with you my three-step formula to stop taking things personally and finally accept yourself. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we talk about self-love, mindset mastery, and building unshakable self-confidence. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified when I upload new videos. Now let's get straight into my first tip on how to not take things personally. Observe the situation objectively. When you're part of a heated argument or you feel triggered by something that someone said or something you read, heard or watched, it can be difficult to detach yourself from the situation and look at it objectively. So I'm going to show you in three quick steps how you can become more mindful in any situation. The first thing I want you to do next time you feel hurt, rejected or like you're taking things way too personally is to ask yourself this one simple question. Is this a fact? This question will help you determine whether you're being objective, rational and detached from the situation or you're being sensitive, triggered and emotional. If your goal is to be less reactive, this question will quickly stop your reactivity in its tracks and help you make a better decision on how to respond. By asking yourself this question, you will have some time to think before you react. And 9 times out of 10, you will discover that the thing you're taking so personally is actually not true. If it's not a fact, you can consciously choose how to handle the situation. Which actually brings me to the second question I want you to ask yourself. What is the outcome I want to achieve in this situation? When you're being sensitive and emotional, you're not thinking clearly and you're seeing things through the lens of your experiences, past traumas and disappointments. So by asking yourself this question, you will shift the focus from the stories that are going through your mind to the real outcome that you want. Let's say you're having an argument with your spouse and you're noticing that you're getting defensive and you have this inner narrative of them trying to hurt you deliberately. You've already answered question number one, so you know that it's not a fact and you're misreading the situation and taking it personally. So now at question number two, you have two options. You can choose to react by yelling, crying, calling them names, storming out of the room, dissociating, or you can choose a more constructive way of handling the situation, such as thinking about the outcome. What do you want to achieve at the end of this conversation? Do you want to blame them, which will leave you both feeling frustrated, defensive and misunderstood? Or do you want to express your feelings without making them feel bad, shameful or rejected? And the last step I want you to take before reacting in this situation is to take a few deep breaths and notice what happens in your body. When we feel triggered by something, our bodies go into fight or flight mode. We feel the adrenaline rush and the pent up emotions inside. And more often than not, we start bursting with anger or we keep it to ourselves and stuff the hurt inside. I've actually made a free cheat sheet on how to track your thoughts and emotions so that you can notice them before reacting. If you want to download it, just click the link in the description box below or head over to bit.ly slash thought record tool. So before you do anything, I want you to take a good look at the thoughts that you're having when you're feeling triggered. Are you taking this personally because it reminds you of a different situation that you experienced growing up? If that is the case, what happened then? How did you react? How did your parents, caretakers or other people involved react? Did they punish you for expressing your feelings or scolded you for being too sensitive? When we're being told that we are too sensitive, especially by someone we love and trust growing up, that makes us feel inadequate, misunderstood and often even unloved. The truth is that being sensitive or not has nothing to do with your worth as a human being. And the sooner you realize that your worth is inherent and no amount of emotion or lack of emotion is going to make you better or worse than you are now, you will start accepting yourself for exactly who you are. Now, taking things personally often has something to do with lack of self-confidence. So if you haven't registered for my free masterclass, Three Confidence Secrets Every Woman Needs to Know, you can register now by clicking the first link in the description box below or visiting coachsimona.com slash masterclass. My second tip on how to not take things personally is to develop self-compassion. We often hear the term self-compassion thrown around. But how do you actually start being compassionate with yourself? Especially when you're trying to not take things too personally. By starting to accept that part of yourself. The part of yourself that feels shameful or wrong for having strong emotions. The interesting thing is that the more you suppress your emotions, the deeper and heavier they're going to get. For example, let's say that something made you feel sad. 
but you decided to ignore the sadness and stuff it inside by binging Netflix, eating junk food, or scrolling on social media. The more you ignore the sadness, the greater it will get, until you can no longer hold it in. At some point, our emotions are bound to get out, and it may happen in a moment that you consider inappropriate or with a person who has nothing to do with the particular emotion that you're experiencing. Now, I want to briefly touch upon the concept of the shadow self. It was created by Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Carl Jung, and it goes like this. Your shadow self is an archetype that forms part of the unconscious mind and is composed of repressed ideas, instincts, impulses, weaknesses, desires, and fears. In other words, your shadow self is the dark part of yourself that you don't want to associate yourself with. If you're actively trying to stop being so sensitive and taking things personally, that is a sign that you're suppressing that part of yourself. So what is one small step towards developing self-compassion that you can take right now? You can stop criticizing yourself whenever you feel emotions or take things personally and dedicate some time to address them. You can call it a worry time, a cry break or anything else that sounds good to you. If you don't want to react immediately because you feel like it's inappropriate to address your feelings at work or you simply don't want to deal with them until you've calmed down, you can set a separate time later on in the day. All you need to do is take 10 minutes to reflect on your feelings you felt earlier that day. You can journal, feel the emotions or use the free cheat sheet I mentioned in the beginning of this video. The entire purpose of being compassionate with yourself is to start accepting the totality of yourself no matter how you're reacting, feeling or acting. Every feeling you have is valid, and everything that's triggering you is pointing you towards unhealed trauma, so pay close attention to it. You would be surprised how much you can find about yourself if you simply sit in silence for 10 minutes and give yourself some time and space to honor your feelings. Now, if you want to learn more advanced techniques on practicing self-compassion, check out the Self-Love Toolkit. It is my proven step-by-step -step framework that will help you learn how to love yourself unconditionally. If you want to get instant access and get your hands on some exclusive bonuses, just head over to www.theselflovetoolkit.com. My next tip is to understand that you're not that important. If I'm triggering you with this statement and you're taking it personally, that is great. That means you're now noticing what actually pushes your buttons and you can choose to react in a different way. Now, let's put your reactivity to the side for a second and observe this statement. What do I mean by saying that you're not that important? I mean that your ego likes to make up stories about yourself where you're the center of attention and everyone is out there to get you. They're trying to hurt you or planning these elaborate ways to cause you harm. So let's talk about this narrative that's frankly not true. Taking things personally means that you have a strong inner monologue and you're believing stories about yourself and other people that have nothing to do with reality. Now, I want to briefly mention the spotlight effect and how it affects the way you see yourself and other people. The spotlight effect is a phenomenon in which people tend to believe they're being noticed more than they really are. Meaning, when you take things personally, you feel offended or hurt by things that most likely have nothing to do with you. By understanding that everyone has their own inner world and everyone is as worried, anxious or self-centered as you, you will realize that you're absolutely normal. You have nothing to fix, you just need to become more self-aware. The more self-aware you become of your tendencies to put way too much attention on your own storylines, the less you're going to believe the mind chatter that is going through your head. Detach yourself by reminding yourself that you're not that important, in the sense that other people have their own stories, experiences and end goals, and most likely they have nothing to do with you. Now, taking things personally and being too sensitive all have to do with a bruised ego which means you've experienced some kind of trauma growing up and often feel vulnerable to other people's opinions or reactions. That's okay. That doesn't mean you're broken. It only means that you need to be brave enough to pull the curtain and take a look inside. If you want to take this a step further, check out this video next, where I'm going to share with you exactly how to stop being so critical of yourself and accept yourself for exactly who you are. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that video.